Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and in this episode we're going to be looking at two new features introduced in Dark Table 4.2. Namely, the two new algorithms in the Highlight Reconstruction module and the new Image Display Pixel Pipe. Alright, let's crack on with it. The first one was in the Highlight module highlight reconstruction module and there is a new default algorithm which is in paint opposed and another new one called segmentation based I won't go into the details of the highlight reconstruction module again if you need a refresher check the video in the series there will be a link on the screen right about now all right so the first one and the default, new default, as we said, is in paint or post. And how it works is that it restores, I'm quoting from the manual, it restores clipped pixels by using an average of adjacent unclipped pixels to estimate the correct color. So for each pixel, it looks at the pixels around it and tries to average them to get to estimate the correct color of the pixel in question. This works well for the majority of images, but may fail where the clipped areas are adjacent to areas of a different color. Okay, that makes sense. For instance, here, if we have a look at the highlights, you can see that this is the clipped air highlights here. The color is not different because it's just part of the sky. However, if you had an area that was overexposed but within another area of a different color, then it makes sense that if you try to estimate that pixel from the area around it, you will get a different color than what it, the original pixel would have been if it wasn't overexposed. The second method or the second new method, I should say, is segmentation-based. And this one is, again, I'm quoting the manual, a more sophisticated algorithm that uses adjacent unclipped pixels to estimate the correct color by treating each clipped area separately as an individual segment. The color of each clipped segment is estimated by analyzing the color ratios of the adjacent pixels. Pixels that are too dark or appear to be an edge are rejected by the algorithm. If all surrounding pixels are rejected, the segment is reconstructed using the in-paint opposed method above. Segments that are close together are often parts of the same object and so can be treated as if they were a single segment. Segmentation-based reconstruction is able to rebuild large areas where all channels are clipped by examining the surrounding gradient. However, you should think of this method more as a way to disguise clipped areas with something plausible, rather than a way to magically repair them. Okay, so instead of actually doing it pixel by pixel, this one looks at the whole clipped area and tries to reconstruct it using the adjacent colors. And yeah, of course, if the information isn't there, it's not going to be magically reconstructed it's all about guessing that's why there are multiple algorithms to try and try to guess the best way to impaint the missing pixels or the overexposed pixels let's look at the controls in the impaint opposed you only have one slider and that's the clipping threshold uh, pixels above this value are considered to be clipped and the algorithm will try to repair them you can click on this icon to visualize what area of the image are considered to be clipped and then we can change it and you see the higher the value you'll get less pixels and if we take it less there you go you can see which pixels are considered clipped now of course lower the value more clipped pixels to be reconstructed Segmentation based has a few more sliders. The first one is the clipping threshold. This controls the number of pixels that are considered to be clipped. 
It also changes the size of the resulting segments and the location of the adjacent pixels. Of course, we can do the same. And you can see the lower the cl clipping threshold, the bigger the area that's going to be considered for reconstruction and the adjacent pixels change because now the adjacent pixels are here of course uh, it's obvious that now it's going to try to use these as adjacent pixels the second slider is combine and that's the radius at which closed segments are combined and considered to be part of the same segment so the higher the value here you will combine more segments because the further they are apart they will be considered still the same segment if you lower it then segments that are closer apart will still be considered separate segment and treated separately and again we can click here to see the effect though i'm not sure it will have any effect here because we only have one huge segment not sure if the effect here is visible again like i said it's one area however if you notice that in your photo there are two separate overexposed areas highlights that you would like to reconstruct but they are supposed to be different colors and the segmentation based algorithm is treating them as one and ending up with one color then you try lowering the combined value until you get the result that you wanted the third slider is candidating and you use that to choose whether the, to prefer choosing candidate pixels these are the pixels used to obtain the color data for the overexposed pixels whether these are chosen with segmentation analysis and that's the high value here or in paint opposed low value click on the button beside the slider to show the segments that are considered to have good candidates the last control in the module associated with segmentation based is rebuild Do you use that one to choose how to rebuild areas that have all channels clipped the small and large modes are tuned for segment sizes less than 25 and greater than 100 pixels in diam diameter the flat mode attempts to ignore narrow unclipped features power lines, branches, to avoid gradients. Finally, the generic mode attempts to find the best settings for each segment. Off is nothing, small and large. Like we said, small is for segment sizes less than 25 and large is for greater than 100 pixel. Flat modes attempt to ignore narrow unclipped features they still have small and large but they're flat so if you had a power line that's going through the sky for instance or branches from a tree then these modes will ignore them in the reconstruction and the generic ones we have three attempt to find best settings for each segment so instead of specifically putting small and large this one will automatically try to figure out if the segment in question is small or large and apply those all right we're going to find a suitable photo or two to use in the showcase session and then go through this segmentation based algorithm one by one to see the what the effect would be on the image or images but that's for the next video the next feature and i only wanted to add it to this video because it doesn't require a lot of explanation it is about using the same pixel pipe that is used to display the image in the main window in darkroom in other places such as in the snapshot so now if i take a snapshot well, let's go further so i can see if i can take a snapshot here now displaying the snapshot is using the same pixel pipe as the display here the nice thing about that apart from um, the coding and efficiency and all the stuff that's mentioned in the um, user manual is that now you can use the same shortcuts to zoom in and zoom out 
and that would work both on the image currently on display and on the snapshot that wasn't the case before the snapshot was a screenshot and if you zoomed you would only zoom the current image and the uh, the snapshot would remain the same all right i think that will do it for this video i hope that you found it uh, interesting and entertaining if you have any questions remarks or suggestions please leave them in the comments below and i'll see you next time bye bye